Shalom. Brach the Yahweh. Brach the Yahweh. Brach the Yahweh. Brach the Yahweh. Call the Layla Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rukakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, gather my saints unto me. I'm going to go into it one moment. <clears throat> and these are scriptures that they're not teaching in these churches at all. How do I know that? Well, I grew up in the church over 30 years. Not a single one of these scriptures were read. Not one. <clears throat> so the Most High has a score to settle with these false prophets out there. And that score is going to be settled with their own blood because they're not covered under the blood of Yahushua, which is this doctrine. So they have no covering. They have no covering. I'm going to start off here in the book of Psalms, chapter 50. <clears throat> Shalom, beloved. The rock of thunder. So these are scriptures that most of us never heard growing up in a Christian church. I'm going to go here to the book of Psalms, chapter 50. Let's go to verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So we're going to go into that covenant. Who was it made with? I'm going to go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, chapter 1. With the Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Haran and Tophel and Laban and Hazareth and Dizlaha. There are eleven days' journey from Oreb by way of Mount Seir unto Kashnebanea. And it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spake unto the children of Israel, according unto all that the Lord had given him in commandment unto them, with Israel. So why isn't this being taught? The covenant made by sacrifice by the sprinkling of blood with Israel. Let's go to Deuteronomy 24. No, Exodus. <coughs> Exodus 24. The book of Exodus chapter 24, verse 1. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, Thou and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh. Neither shall the people go up with him. There is always a mediator, an intercessor. The congregation of Israel does not deal directly with the Most High. And on top of that, 
He's only dealing with the nation of Israel. Through the Old Testament, it was Moses. Now the intercessor is Yahawashah, Amashiach, our Lord and Savior. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh. Neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments and all, and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord have said, we will do. Well, the context is Israel. So we are commanded to keep the charge, to keep the covenant, the words written in this book. So the order is the nation of Israel being set back first because the covenant is made with the nation of Israel. So the world is not going to get back in order until the world of Israel repent. That's the order. Somebody post that in, in um, 1 Corinthians 14. Let all things be done decently and in order. So the order is the tabernacle of David, the house of Israel, followed by the other nations. So salvation starts with the elect of the nation of Israel. Exodus 24, verse 3. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord has said, we will do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. So now in modern times, pursuant to Isaiah chapter 19, this altar is being rebuilt in that place that spiritual Sodom in Egypt, America. Look at the back of your $1 bill. So the altar is for the Israelites. We just read it. No other nation can serve the Most High without the altar of the 12 pillars of Israel being set up. So the pillars of wisdom is being rebuilt on the chief cornerstone, Yahawashai. Brother Andre serving Yahawashai, 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. And also Brother Boyan Yasharala. See, Brother Andre serving Yahawashai, Psalms 147 and 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So the Most High sees the world through the spectacle of Jacob, of Israel. He's dealing with the world of Israel. There are many worlds. Exodus 24, verse 4. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrifice peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. So in modern times, our service, our acts of service is sacrifice, presenting our bodies on the altar, the place of worship. So when you read Isaiah chapter 19, an altar is being erected or built 
in the land of bondage, spiritual Sodom and Egypt, America. If somebody don't mind posting that in Isaiah. So we're speaking the language of Canaan. Kohalayma, Yahweh, Mahashem, Yahweh Shai, Mahashem, or Kwah Kadash, or Rakatha Yahweh, or Rakatha Yahweh Shai. See? So how can we not have the name if we're speaking the ancient language of Canaan and building an altar in spiritual Sodom in Egypt, America? Exodus 24, verse 6. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. See? So right now, the blood that's covering the elect is the blood of the Lamb, Yahawashai. So you Old Testament only heads that reject the Messiah, you don't understand the scriptures. You don't have blood sprinkled on your mind, your doorway, without accepting Yahawashai. <coughs> Brother Bayan Yasharala and Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 19, verse 18. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. America is that place of, what is it called? Perdition. So you have the daughter of Babylon, which is that city of destruction, which means perdition, which is led by the Edomites. Satan is messing with me. Sweat and salt got into my eyes. See that? So that's the daughter of Babylon, America. Which is that place of perdition, destruction led by the children of Edom. So we're in the dawn of Babylon, spoken of in Psalms 137. So a spiritual altar is being built. When the children of Israel, elect, are hitting the highways and byways, that's the burnt offering, our bodies. We're not killing oxen, lambs, and goats. So we're covered under the blood of Yahweh Shai through faith. And then you have camps being set up on the major continents. But it starts here in America. Exodus 24, verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, all that the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. So the book of the covenant is not being read to Moab, Chinese, Ammon, Japanese, Ishmael, the Arabs, Elam, East Indians, Amalek, the little hats, Okay, the little Tic Tac hats. It's not being read to them. So the covenant of promise, somebody get me uh, Acts 26, verse 6 and 7. Acts 26, 6 and 7. Let's go back to Exodus 24 and 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. See, <clears throat> he showed his word unto Jacob his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. 
And this is Paul on trial, fighting for his life. Andre serving in Havashai, Acts 26 and 7, unto which, so he's, he's trying to explain himself. He did not forsake the law and the promises made to our people, our fathers. He's speaking to King Agrippa. That's the context. Acts 26, verse 6. And now I stand and am judge for the hope of the promise made of the Most High unto our fathers. That's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Israelites, unto which promise our 12 tribes instantly serving the Most High day and night. Hope to come for which hope's sake King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. So wicked Negroes have always attacked this word, the will of the Most High. And they attacked the first mediator, Moses. Now they're attacking the chief cornerstone and his men. And how shy the apostles, the prophets, the elders and teachers. So the blood was sprinkled on the Israelites. Let's go back to Psalms 50. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The Chinese didn't have blood sprinkled on them. Neither did Ishmael, the Arabs or Ammon, the Japanese, or Elon, the East Indians, Amalek, the little hat, big-nosed people. They didn't have the blood sacrifice, which leads us to what? Let's go here to Matthew 15. So now this is going to make sense. Matthew 15, verse 22. This is Yehoshai speaking to the woman of Canaan. Matthew 15 and 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, she, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the blood of the lamb covers the congregation of Israel. That's who he sent for. We just read it. And he eventually heals this woman's daughter. She is an Israelite. Scattered into Canaan. So she showed the faith in the Messiah and worshiped him. <clears throat> but he stated his mission, his purpose. When he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So why are we not being taught these scriptures? Let's go to Matthew 18. Matthew 18. So eventually he uh, heals her daughter. And uh, matter of fact, let's go down to um, right here. Matthew 15. The book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 25. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Yahweh answered 
and say unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. The Israelites have faith. Elect. Let's go to Matthew 18 and 10. Salt getting into my eyes. Why are we not being taught these scriptures? Matthew 18. Let's go to verse 10. And how was I speaking? Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, or I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. The children of Israel, elect, those are the little ones. Verse 11, for the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. The lost sheep, or the lost tribes of the house of Israel. We just read it. This was taken out of the New International Version. Matthew 18 and 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Clear. How think ye if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? So he's pulling from the Old Testament. Let's go to Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34, verse 10. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. So this entire chapter is dedicated to the house of Israel, the twelve tribes. Ezekiel 34, verse 11, For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all the places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day, the, the great day of the Lord, the Israelites are going to be redeemed, delivered. So when we read Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, no man shall buy thee, no man shall redeem us. So we're purchased by the blood of the Lamb. And that's why he says, I will not meet thee as a man. So Yahweh Shai is coming back to save his flock, his people, redeem the nation of Israel. Those are the promises to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, pursuant to James 1 and 1. Ezekiel 34 Verse 12, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark gate. The great day of the Lord is a day of terror, a day of thick smoke, thick clouds, and thick darkness. The king of terror is going to rise up to you Edomites that are ruling in wickedness. You've got to pay. Ezekiel 34, verse 13. 
and I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. The kingdom of heaven is going to be established right here on earth when the Israelites are set back in order. So the word of covenant has to be fulfilled. The promises, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, no nation can serve the Most High right now except the elect of Israel. That's the order. The tabernacle must be built first. The altar must be established and dedicated to the name Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's the order. Ezekiel 34, verse 14. I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of, of Israel. So we're reading about the kingdom of heaven being established on earth, not floating away in a magic carpet somewhere. Ezekiel 34, verse 14. I will feed, I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. So this all connects back to what was taken out of the New International Version. Matthew 18, verse 10 through 12. I am not sent. Let's go back to it. Matthew 18 and 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost, his scattered sheep. Somebody said, Maurice Heath, DMS called me a demon. Well, that's maybe because you're interrupting the lessons. You're supposed to be just listening and learning, or you're just disturbing edification. So by default, that makes you the devil, interrupting the, the message coming out. So it looks to me that you were not called out of your name. The Holy Spirit can recognize devil. So the Son of Man is come to redeem his people. Somebody post Matthew 1 and 21, please. <clears throat> when the word is coming out and the seed is being planted in the minds of the hopeful elect, then Satan comes to take away that which was planted. But the elect is not going to be derailed or thrown off track. Yeah, Brother GMS Gabardama, Hebrews 11 and 18, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Beautiful. So the promises cannot be broken. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it gets a little heavy with Isaac because that is Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh Shai, the stem of Jesse, I mean, uh, he's the root and offspring of David. And he comes out of David, which is the stem of Jesse. So excuse me. So without Yahweh Shai, then there is no hope. There is no redemption. We're not, we can't be purchased back without the blood of the Lamb, which is Yahweh Shai. <coughs> Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai, Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's clear. 
Yep, Brother GMS Kabar Ghana, Hebrews 11 and 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning these things to come. Don't get fancy. Esau was blessed with a sword. So really, he was tricked. He was supplanted because he who liveth by the sword shall die by the sword. So Esau was supplanted, being blessed with the sword and the fatness of the earth <coughs> temporarily to fulfill prophecy. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given to the hands of the wicked and that last beast with great iron teeth, the revised Roman Empire, America, the European Union, and NATO. So his blessing being the sword fulfills prophecy, the will of the Most High. From the GMS Kabar Dunn, Hebrews 11 and 21. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worship, leaning upon the top of his staff. So the Israelites have faith, which starts with his elect. No other nation can worship the Most High without the Israelites being set back in order first. So eventually, all nations are going to worship the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, under the order of the sons of God, Yashar Allah, Yashar Allah, Israel. Love you too, brothers. Love you too. Let's keep going. See? So this matches Matthew 18 and 10. Back to Ezekiel 34, verse 15. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord power. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away. And I will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. So they're going to be fed with their own flesh. You Edomites, you got to pay. Look up the lynching photos here in America. This place that's spiritual Sodom in Egypt. Look up the auction blocks of the Israelites being sold like cattle on the slave markets. You got to pay. And the real men are telling you that. You're going to go into slavery, just like the Israelites did. This is going to be the worst slavery known to mankind. You're going to break the record that the Israelites serve right now as the worst bondage. So you're going to surpass our bondage. And most of you are not going to make it. You're going to dwindle away because of the hard bondage. And men are going to be your overseers. Not these broke back ass men that Hollywood and Amalek set up from the music in Hollywood and music production industry. Let's go to Deuteronomy 30. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee, or the small hats driven away in slavery on ships. They finance the ships. They finance the slave trade. The little Tic Tac hat people. So this was all programmed into our destiny when we read this. So the Lord knew we would go off. What builds a strong king that, that knows judgment, having suffered the curses of the judgment? What better king than a king or a judge that haven't undergone these punishments, these afflictions. 
The best judge understand the sorrow, the turmoil, the pain, the suffering, what it means to serve at the bottom. Deuteronomy 30, verse 1, And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whether the Lord thy God have driven thee. So he already programmed us to go off. All these curses shall come upon thee. So he's building a throne of judges. See, I know you see that. Wow. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whether the Lord thy God have driven thee, and shall return unto the Lord thy power, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thine soul. We're doing that now. So gather together my saints unto me. His elect are calling on his name, <clears throat> being gathered by the word. So we're witnessing the rebuilding of the Lord's tabernacle. Deuteronomy 30, verse 3. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. So this is a rebuilding of Jerusalem. The lively stones that are putting forth action, lively stones give off light or radiant, and that light is a similitude for this wisdom. So the lively stones cannot be overlooked. The lively stones, the elect of the saints, are a spectacle unto the world, shining in a land of gross darkness, where the rainbow coalition are our governors, our mayors, our senate, our congress members, the president, you see? So the elect are shining bright in a land of absolute gross abominations and wickedness. Deuteronomy 30, verse 3 again. <clears throat> that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whether the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven. From thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. See? Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. For the blood is sprinkled upon the doorways of the minds of the elect, which is Yahweh supping with those that have already been preordained to get this wisdom. Deuteronomy 30, verse 5. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. So Paul was explaining this while he was on trial for his life in Acts 26, verse 6 and 7. Promises made to our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes of the patriarch of kings and priests. <clears throat> So right now, imposters are in the land. 
They just went over there with the 1948 man-made accord. And they thank Lord Rothschild. There's a famous letter that was written to Lord Rothschild thanking him. That's not how we're going to get the land. The Savior himself is going to come and gather his elect with the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. It's not going to happen by some man-written contract. That's bugged out. Bugged out. Talking about, thank you, Lord Rothschild. The Rothschilds are going to be in chains and shackles. That's what's going to happen to the Rothschilds. Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. And the Lord thine God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. So all of the commandments are going to be placed in the minds of the elect. No more broke back parades. That's going to be a thing of the past. No more cavemen as judges. How can you set up a magistrate of judges on stolen land built with blood money? That's bugged out. A caveman judge wearing a red wig. That's, that's crazy as hell. So how can you execute judgment and justice? And you are a robber and a thief. It doesn't work. Pushing a rainbow coalition agenda. That's bugged out. But when the true judges are set up, those type of people are going to get their due punishment in the other nations. All right? And that punishment is going, they're going to be made into fish food. Fish food. Those type of people. These disgusting, dirty, abominable people. But in this system, they're set up as judges. <laughs> the magistrate. <coughs> Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. So we're going to have the law, statutes, and commandments ingrained into our mind. Thine and thy seed and thy seed seed. Somebody post that in Isaiah 59, please. Isaiah 59, somewhere around verse 19 and 20. So we'll never go off again, which means we'll never be thrown down again. No more slavery, no more affliction, no more sickness, no more pain and sorrow, <clears throat> no more woman over the man being kicked out of the house by Jezebel, paying her for the rest of her life while she gets her back beat out and her hip thrown out by another man. That's bugged out. But under the caveman, that's normal. That's normal. What's the problem? This nigga got to go. This nigga has got to go. But under this system, she's getting paid to do that. Deuteronomy 30, verse 8. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand and in the fruit of thy body. We're going to be having sexual intercourse. And I know that's too hard for you weak men out there. Okay? So the fruit of thy body, that seed which is sperm, why is this so complicated? I don't understand. A lot of weak men get offended when the Bible is promising that the kings are going to be multiplied, many wives and children, <clears throat> just like King David and all the other kings of Jacob, Israel. So we're reading about sperm. That's the seed which is going to become fruit, children. It's a shame we got to break this down like that. Deuteronomy 30, verse 9. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, for good, 
For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. We keep reading about the promises of thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's read this for these weak, scared men. Isaiah 60, verse 21. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. So the, <laughs> the, the Lord uses the elect, vessels of mercy, to glorify himself. Mercy seed. So the elect were created for vessels of mercy. <clears throat> Isaiah 60 and 22. A little one shall become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. What Eve, you know, can have a thousand babies? It's not going to happen. <coughs> So the Israelite men are going back to the old way. Turn ye to the old past. And that's what's going to happen. Whether you weak men like it or not. Deuteronomy 30, verse 9. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land. For good, for the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. So the world is going to transition back into an agrarian society, agricultural base, no more wars. So the weapons of war is going to be turned into agricultural tools for farming. <coughs> No more GMOs, no more Monsantos being killed by insecticides and pesticides. That's under the caveman. That's going to be a thing of the past. No more cancer, no more sickness and disease. Fake fruit, fake vegetables, all going to be done away with after this caveman gets put in his place. Deuteronomy 30, verse 10. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law. And if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. So what is the law, statutes, and commandments? It's this word in its entirety. See, let's go to Psalms 119, verse 172. So the law, statutes, and commandments is the word which is the law in its entirety. Psalms 119, somebody post that in Revelations 14 and 12, please. The elect are they that keep the commandments, which is this word, being gathered by the word of promise, believing in the promises, repenting, and putting off the old man and renewing a new man every day. That's following these lessons, being washed daily. How many goes a week without taking a bath? If you go a week without taking a bath, that's just like not hearing this word for that day. We eat daily. We bathe daily. See? Psalms 119, verse 172. My tongue shall speak thy word, for all thy commandments are righteous. Woo! See? So the word is a encapsulation of the law, statutes, and commandments. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 30, verse 10. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord, thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the book of this law. And if thou turn unto the Lord thy God 
with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Now let's go back to Psalms 119 and verse 172. <coughs> the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 172. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteous. Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. So the, the Lord is our defense. He's our staff. We use to guide us. When you look at a shepherd, he's got a staff. So Yahweh Shai keeps us stable. He's our stability, our rock. He's our shield. What happens when a wolf comes? or a bear, or a lion. The shepherd takes his staff and points that staff at the threat. So he is our staff, our comfort, our defense, our stability, an embodiment of the volume of pure righteousness. <coughs> See, Brother Basic Wisdom, Shalom, Allah, Barakatha. Or the basic wisdom, Revelations 14 and 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of our power and the faith of Yahweh Shai. So the elect are in the crosshairs of the great red dragon, the international bankers, the global elite, the Old Testament heads that don't believe in Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> they're going to be used and they're going to take that C hip or the M to the O to the T to the B. Yahweh Shai warned us of the apocalyptic events to come. The C hip, the M to the O to the T to the B. So without believing in him, you have no covering. You have no blood sprinkled on your doorway, your mind. You're bugged out. And you're going to take that okie doke, okay, the hokey pokey. Let's go to Luke 18 and 5. <coughs> but the Luke chapter 18, verse 5. So the widow is the daughter of Zion, <coughs> the captive daughter of Zion. That was casted away temporarily. I was cut off that went into captivity that fled into the wilderness. So the captive daughter of Zion, elect, are coming back to the marriage vows, the marriage contract, being reconciled back to the Father through the mediator, the intercessor, Yahweh Shai. Somebody post that please in uh, Isaiah. 59, an intercessor. He is the judge. He is the mediator. When you go to that word intercessor in Isaiah 59, it means mediator. So he is the judge, the lawgiver, the mediator. <coughs> Luke 18 and 5. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continuing coming she wearied me, and the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he not find faith on the earth? The faithful city. The calmly and delicate daughter of Zion, the house of David, different names. <coughs> See? Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 59, verse 16. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness. It sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. 
and put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. See? That's Yahweh So he's going to be a judge for the afflicted and a father to the, fa to the fatherless. <coughs> a father to the fatherless. A mediator. So he is that bridge to get back to the father. Those that reject the intercessor, the mediator, is bogged out. Because without a bridge, without a intercessor, there is no high priest to get to the Father. And, other, and also, there is no blood sacrifice. That's a part of our law. There has to be a sprinkling of blood in order to be reconciled back to the Father. Luke 18 and 7, and shall not the Most High avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. <clears throat> so the faithful city, the city of David, that's the elect a.k.a. the daughter of Zion, that calmly and delicate daughter that's being clothed with the new robes of righteousness, that's being decked out with the ornaments and made a spectacle unto the world. Who would have thought those that were sold into a nation as slaves and built the most wealthy, most powerful military prowess on earth would be raised up in the land of their captivities. Who would have thought it takes spiritual intervention in order to see this become fruition? It takes a literal hand of God to do this. His own arm sustained him. So the right arm of justice is being lifted up through the spirit raising up his elect that are being attracted to the sound of the sweet melody. See? Psalms 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So who's teaching David? Going out to the highways and byways. You can see your teachers that are exemplifying that they've been marked with the Tawah, sprinkled with the blood of the Lamb by the fruits of labor. <clears throat> I know you see that. So you can identify the elect because the fruits are luscious, a spectacle, attractive, radiant, giving off light. I mean, he wants a dull apple or dull pear or orange. You want it shiny. When you're trying to sell it, you're polishing that thing. You know? <laughs> so the elect are lively, polished up, clean up, new creatures being washed, made new. A public global spectacle. Gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So the elect can't be hidden, shiny, bright. The elect cannot be concealed. How can you conceal a shining light? <coughs> Let's close out here. The Lord is going to revenge his sanctuary. He's going to avenge his temple that was cast down and stones that were scattered abroad, dispersed with ships, <coughs> slaves. The book of Psalms, chapter 74, verse 1. My skill of Asaph, O God, why hast thou cast us off forever? Why doth thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pastor? <coughs> Psalm 74, verse 2. 
Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed. This Mount Zion, wherein thou hast dwelt, the Lord is going to dwell again in his temple. He wants to put his feet up, so to speak. This tabernacle is going to be with the men of the sons of Jacob. That's what Revelations 21, verse 3. He's looking for his place to put his feet up, lay up his hat, so to speak. You see, hang his hat up. So his temple is being built on earth. That's why we pray. I pray that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what is above is going to be reflected below. This tabernacle is with men. That's coming on earth. Psalm 74, verse 2. Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed. This Mount Zion, wherein thou hast dwelt, to Zion, memorial, it's in his memory. He cannot forget what's been ingrained into his memory, the memorial of his saints. Psalm 73, <coughs> Psalm 74, verse 3, lift up thy feet. Man, I was speaking through the Spirit. I said he's looking for a place to put his feet up and hang up his hat. Looking for a place to put up and kick up his feet. And kick back. <laughs> <coughs> Psalm 74 verse 3. Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations. Even all that the enemy have done wickedly in the sanctuary. So the enemies of the Lord are going to be trodden down underfoot. So Satan is going to be trodden down underfoot. Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations, even all that the enemy have done wickedly in the sanctuary. They have cast fire into thy sanctuary. They have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground. I thought his name didn't matter. So all types of bug outs are being identified in these last days. So his name is being restored in the altar of Sodom in Egypt that we read about in Isaiah chapter 19. That place of worship, a place of worship <coughs> where his saints are gathering in his name or the basic wisdom. Matthew 11 and 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So this is how we're getting comforted. Putting off the old man. The ways of this world is a heavy yoke. <clears throat> you pay taxes on a million dollar home. You owe taxes on a two million dollar home. You get that Bentley that you've been working 30 years to get. And now you've got to pay for three times its value on the tax increase of that Bentley every year. You have kids. Eve, take your kids. Go get her back beat out by another man. And you pay her for the rest of her life for kids you can't see. So the burden or the yoke of this world is heavy. Paying taxes to Caesar. So it's a handsome, a hamster running in a turn wheel. Can never get ahead. You buy one house, and when you die, it goes into probate status. The caveman takes that house that you worked 40 years to get and pay off. You see? <coughs> and then you resell it to other cavemen. So they keep it in their family. 
They keep the wealth under their own bloodlines. See, that's in what? Somebody posted in Psalm 7, 17 <coughs> towards the bottom. That wealth gets passed down to other little cavemen. That's what they do. So we don't own anything here. Arise and depart, for this is not your rest. <coughs> so this truth is a comfort unto us. So this is not a heavy burden. Yes, it's riddled with affliction, trials, and tests. But the kingdom of heaven is going to far exceed any type of pain, tribulation, or suffering that we've encountered here. So our afflictions are light afflictions compared to eternal rest and glory, immortality, rulership. So this is very comforting, peace of mind. Those that led us into captivity, they're going to go into captivity. See, right here, <coughs> Andre serving your house shot. Psalm 17 and 14. From men which are thine hand, O Lord, from men of the world, which have their portion in this life, in whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. Okay, little cablets. See? So they keep the wealth in their own kind. This is what they do. <clears throat> but this is but a light affliction compared to the eternal rest of glory and everlasting life. So gather my saints together unto me. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. And I went a little bit over it what I intended to do. Well, hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. <clears throat> All praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem Kwakadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. Pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect scattered abroad. Much love to the beloved ladies and the hopeful elect of the house of David. We got next, Lord willing. Tabernacle of David is being raised up. The saints of the lively stones of Jerusalem, the rebuilding of the Lord's temple. Clam Yasharala and Abad Abad. Barakatham, Shalom.